Hello, welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Railgun. Now, Railgun is a privacy protocol on Ethereum. Uh, the Binance are BNB chain and Polygon, and then they're also talking about other chains like Arbitrum and uh, Midas and stuff like this. Anyhow, I, I'm not a, a huge fan of uh, privacy tokens and protocols like Tornado and stuff. We've seen what's happened to Tornado, right? So why am I talking about Railgun? Well, Railgun has some key features inside that make it pretty interesting, and uh, it's it's definitely big brain stuff. Um, I, I, I think that the the features that it does have will help protect this uh, protocol from the kind of things that happen to tornado cash and uh, so forth so let's uh, i I've, i have done a nice flow chart to explain everything as usual but uh feel free to come and check out the website like as you can see the the team is all fully docs they have docs advisors it's a uh, in this case it's a you know it's a good thing um you know, you can come inside, you can come into the app, play around with it and so forth and decide whether or not you want to uh, take part and use this kind of thing. Um, there's a Medium article here that kind of explains most of it in uh, simple terms in some in some cases. And then there's the docs, which is a, you know, is which is a piece of work in itself. Um, there's a whole section here on like the privacy system where like how it uses ZK rollup or ZK snarks and all of these different features and stuff I'm not going to explain all of this to you if you want to know more about how ZK zero knowledge proofs and the ZK snarks and stuff come into play here then I would suggest you to come and check out this section I'm gonna basically explain everything outside of that section and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit on that when I go into the flowchart so let's go over to the flowchart now and let's talk about railgun Okay, so here we are on the flowchart, and here we have Boosted Bill. Boosted Bill is a pure degen, and he wants to do some uh, private transactions. Okay, now it doesn't necessarily like this protocol, and the the the, the, the use case for privacy is not just about you know degens trying to hide what they've done right there are some genuine use cases that i didn't think of that they describe inside the docs here and just to give you a quick little tdlr on them well first of all is there's alpha protection okay so let's say booster bill has some alpha and he wants or, and he wants to act on it but he doesn't want other people to act on it uh, immediately because maybe he wants the dollar cost average into that alpha position then he can use this protocol or he can use a privacy feature protocol to to protect his alpha because people won't be able to see that he's buying that token and so forth especially if he's an influencer right the second thing is private payroll systems so like let's say i have a dow or a go or a company or something and i have to pay everybody if i do it on the blockchain then everybody can see what everybody else is salary is right whereas if we use a private payroll system through here then you know we can protect that right um arb opportunity protection so let's say you are a big brain guy and you, you build bots for arbitrage or mev or something like that and you don't want people to see you know what you're doing and the arbitrage opportunity that you're you're performing and then of course copy you follow you and so forth so you can use this uh, censorship resistance is like say you're in a country where you know certain things are censored and you still want to do them because of whatever reasons then you can use this product to do that um, docs protection now this is not really like doxing your alias because you know metamask has the same docs like you don't have to put your name to get a metamask wallet but more like you know your wallet being linked to your twitter account or something like that it's much harder to do that with some sort of protection or privacy features right and the last thing is client protection they call this a uh, can't remember the term uh, but think of it this way like let's say i have a big group of clients and i'm not they have a privacy agreement with me and i'm not supposed to disclose to the public that these people are you know my clients and so for some reason or that i'm handling some of their finances or whatever it is that i'm doing for those people then i can you know give people their profits or i can give people their payments or whatever that that, that thing is i can protect them via this this client this privacy features so there are some genuine use cases for privacy transactions beyond like you know something like you 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 hacked and you stole a whole bunch of funds and you need to wash them right so 
there's a lot of real world privacy as well. Like there's a lot of corporations and companies that do things like privately and they don't want, you know, people to know about it or they don't want their competitors to know. Like if I'm buying things from a certain company, then perhaps I don't want my competitors to know that I'm paying that company to supply me with some sort of technology or something like that. Okay. So anyways, let's move on. So you, these are the ideas of some ideas of why you might want to use privacy protection. Okay. So how does this thing work? So as you can see, Boosted Bill, he has his you know, MetaMask 0x wallet address already and he's got some tokens inside that wallet right so the first thing he's going to want to do is he's going to want to boot up a railway uh wallet okay so he needs to boot up a, a wallet inside the the the, the, the app and then when you go to the app you can see there's a little like add wallet or uh import or import wallet or create a new wallet right so you create this new wallet and you're you're given a new 0x address so this is another public wallet on the blockchain, so to speak. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to send your uh, some of your funds to this other 0x wallet. Now, this transaction will not be protected. It will be visible. Uh, you, They will see that you have sent, you know, from your docs address to this address. And this address is might be known or might not be known as a uh, as a wallet address connected to the railway network. And then you'll have to pay gas, of course, because you're sending, you're initiating a transaction on the blockchain and you're signing and it goes to the meme pool and all that kind of stuff, right? So until MetaMask has some sort of integration with this, if they ever decide to do so, then you're going to have to do this step. Now, if this step, if MetaMask was already integrated with Railgun, then you wouldn't need this railway wallet, right? So anyways, so you send the, 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 uh, the tokens to this 0x Addy, Right. And then it basically gets for for lack of a better like for I'm simplifying here, but like all of the everyone's tokens gets basically put into the smart contract together. So they're all in a big pool of like a like a giant wallet filled with tons of like tons of uh, different, um, you know, tons of different tokens and stuff like that. So the smart contracts of the railgun basically now hold all of those those kinds of tokens right but you you still command them through this zero x addy wallet right so the first thing you're going to want to do is to hide your you know protect or what they call shield your tokens your your assets right so you'll need to perform a shield uh a shielding transaction or you would have to like if you want to leave this system and go back to metamask then you would have to unshield right now this transaction both ways would cost you 0 0.1 0 0.25 percent fee okay and this is where the zk snarks comes into play so this kind of like 0x see the 0 zk addy so they will give you a, a like an address inside your wallet you would have two addresses you would have an address where you know you, you would send and then you would have your zk address now this zk address is connected to this address but it's hidden through the zero knowledge proofs okay now like i said i'm not going to talk about zero knowledge proofs too much that's too big of a can of worms for this video so now he has two addresses this address now holds the funds right has the the power to use those funds and uh this address has given it basically given him this power now the the wall the assets are still sitting in that smart contract right but now this this kind of 0x address has been associated with those funds, okay? Now, this fee here, every two weeks, bi-weekly, is given to whoever has the real token staked, okay? So this fee is taken, but it is given to the people who hold this real token. So I'm not sure if this real token had a... Uh, I didn't look into it whether or not this real token had a VC or pre sale or anything like that. This is if you want to buy this token, that's something you're going to have to dig into yourself. So, Dollar Bill or Boosted Bill here wants to do something. So, what does he do? He tells the railway wallet what he wants to do, right? And then the railway wallet transmits that data encrypted to the Waka Relayer network. So this is like a, a network of like kind of like nodes. So these guys are going to basically get the information from the railway wallet and then basically have that information ready. And maybe they might, you know, combine things. They might, 
they might be able to do some sort of coincidences of wants here or something like that. But anyways, they they get the data encrypted from the railway wallet. So this is protected and nobody can see that, you know, where it's come from. And then they will then you know, call those the, the, the transaction details to the bucket of money, and that money will be then sent to DeFi to do all kinds of things, like maybe transfer. So you can transfer from one ZK wallet to someone else's ZK wallet, or you can swap on a Uniswap or a Curve, or you can deposit into some sort of vault, or maybe disperse, like send to a whole bunch of ZK wallets and stuff like that. So anyways, you, you get the idea. Now, the key thing here, Oh, sorry, there will be a gas charge here because the relay network needs to pay gas because they are, you know, they are changing the state of the blockchain. So generally, they're going to add a fee to this. Now, each relayer, each relayer has the right to set the fee that they want, right? So there's a, a market or like a market demand here, whereas the cheaper relayer will get more transactions. So they will compete with each other to, to bring, keep this, this fee down low, right? But generally, it's about 10% on top of the gas fee, okay? So, but you don't have to hold the gas fee. It will be, re, it will be uh, paid in the token that you're, you're transacting in. So if, if I send in DAI, and I have DAI in here, and I want to send my friend DAI, it will just take a piece of the DAI, and then the relayers will worry about paying the Ethereum gas or whatever chain you're on, right? Now... Key thing here is like, let's say the snoopers, people who are watching and trying to figure out stuff, right, that these protections are f against these people, they will see some of these, like, because it's on chain, right, like the, the re but they will only be able to see that the relayer performed these transactions, they won't be able to trace it all the way back to boosted bill here, right. Now, as you can see, there's quite a few opportunities, there's quite a few options. And if there's a lot of people doing transfers and swaps, as opposed to more like complicated things, then this pool of, of assets gets changed quite frequently and quite drastically. And if you use tokens that are like quite common, like DAI or Ethereum USDC, instead of, you know, Caesar shit coin, then it also will improve the chances of you, you know, of the, uh, of the funds being like secure or hidden and private, right? So anyways, so the only thing they'll be able to see is that the relayer has performed these kinds of transactions. Now there's a little bit of, they talked a little bit about like a sandwich attacks and the protection of the relayer network doing the sandwich attacks, but it's not impossible to sandwich them. They said it's slightly harder, okay? So I don't quite understand why, but you can double dig dig deeper into that but do keep the main key feature here is that you don't need to hold the gas token they're going to settle that for you okay now the last thing i'm going to talk about is something that makes this very special and very interesting is that there are two kinds of keys right there is the sender key the key that allows boosted bill like basically this wallet to tell the relayers to do things right it's like the private key on metamask right but then there's also a viewing key so what you can do is you can give a viewing key to somebody, let's say the government or an auditor or a you know, compliance agent at your company, whatever this person is, you can give him a viewing key and you can set the time to start and the time to end. So think of it like, you know, January 1st until December 31st of the tax year or whatever. So you can set this time frame in which he can view all the transactions that are happening you know, based on this zero, this uh, ZK roll up wall or the ZK snark wallet, right? Now, the key thing to say here is that they're irrevocable. So if you do give this key to somebody, you won't be able to stop them from looking at this time frame. So it's not a temporary viewing, it's a permanent ability to view this time frame. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. Uh, they do talk a little bit about the ability to send in NFTs and use NFTs in this feature in this system, and then because especially things like you know Uniswap version three NFTs, which are 
you know, more than just like JPEGs and stuff like that. So anyways, I hope this has been useful and interesting. I found it to be pretty interesting and I really enjoyed reading about the ZK snarks and stuff like this. It's a little bit uh, above my, you know, IQ points, I guess you might say, but I'll read it again a few times and they do do a good job of explaining some of the the, the ZK setups and all of the technical things that you, you may want or need to know. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and goodbye.